Hello everyone, Manithrall here. Welcome to a skilling guide for Menaphos. Now this is the surface world, not the shifting tombs. Now if you are looking into getting fast, and I mean fast, reputation gains, you do want to do shifting tombs. Because 9 chances out of 10, if even if you solo it, you are going to be getting more um, reputation per hour by going through the shifting tubes. So you want to do it that way. You, you don't want to waste your time trying to do it with the skilling. Now the only reason why I'm skilling in Menaphos is because, well, for two things. The wood cutting here is extremely easy and I need to do wood cutting. It's my rotation set right now. And I need to do wood cutting. <laughs> That's pretty much it. But, okay, so for people who are saying Menaphos is skilling is a waste of time, it's not worth a high level's time, blah 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 blah, it's stupid, blah 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 blah, no, it's excellent, it's actually extremely good. Uh, maybe not for a high level, but it's not meant for high levels. Menaphos is meant for mid-level players, so we're talking from 50 to 75. Basically, this is the hub city, the best city, for people of those levels. So, if you can get into Profindus, you want to go for skilling in Profindus. It's going to have your best ratio. That is what this is. This is the step before Profindus. Now, other than beating that over the head, <clears throat> what you want to do in Manifest. Okay, so before you even start skilling or anything like that in any of these areas, you want to get your reputation to at least tier two for every single district. So you want to have tier two merchant, you want to have tier two imperial, you want to have tier two port, you want to have tier two worker. Reason being is because they are very useful because it'll unlock the deposit box, which as you can see is right there. So if I just want to collect all these logs, I could just take them over there and deposit them. I wouldn't have to burn them right away. But I would strongly suggest doing that. You know, actually just burning them because you can't craft them. Right now there's no use for them other than exactly what I'm doing right now. Which they're a lot easier than maples or a lot easier than use. So really... Cutting these is actually very nice. Very, very easy wood cutting. And you're also getting reputation every single time you do it. Okay, now, if you're not sure about the different skilling locations throughout Metaphos, we're going to do something here. Now, make sure you do this. You can quick travel using the shifting tombs. Merchant District is the very first one you'll actually come into. Now, if you guys remember in my Shifting Tombs episode, uh, there's a chance, I told you about, there's a chance of getting stuff like the uh, Metaphyte, the small offering, okay? Now, I don't know if there's a large offering, there very well could be, and it could just be extremely rare, which is very possible. <clears throat> but as you can see, this is very simple, you know, you get... <clears throat> The only thing I would wish they would change about this part is that it would look work a lot like the Profindus one. Except instead of, you know, the individual districts, it would be the individual person in the area. Oh, see right there. I found a small Menophyte gift offering. And so how it would work here, though, is once they'd catch you, they'd be on a you know, high guard for, you know, maybe five minutes per person. But that all that means is you just go to a different person and you start pickpocketing from them instead. It's as simple as that, really. And I am just starting to lag like crazy. And I just noticed something up here. There's actually a lamp stall. And it says you can actually steal from it. So we're going to try to steal from this lamp stall. 
Okay, so I stole the lamp, and it... It gave me more XP, but... Kind of has a little bit of a delay. But you do get, actually, a good amount of XP for it. So there is stalls you can pick pocket from. So do keep that in mind. I get about the double the amount of XP, and I get quite a bit of other stuff here. Now, it's kind of disappointing you can't steal from the gem trader. You can steal from the silk stall. Uh, you do gotta watch out for those guys, but you do get more XP from that. Well, uh, yeah, you get more reputation from that than you do here. And also, these guys right here that have the symbols above their head, they are the daily quest ones. So you can actually do daily quests with them. So you can't really steal from many stalls here, but there is that one from the lamp stall, which is actually very good. Okay, but now I want to show you the gift offering. So I'll open this up. Look at that, I got a diamond ring, diamond necklace, and 45k. That's not bad. So, that, that's one thing. So that is actually the Mercen District currently as a whole. Okay, up next, we're going to go to the Worker District. Now, the Worker District is a very simple one. Um, if you really do want some mining XP and you don't really want to worry about the items, I would actually recommend this because right there is your bank deposit box and right over there is mineral deposits. Now it's for sandstone, so it's, you know, not something that's going to be really high priority to you, but you can kind of use that. Now the next plot I want to go to, oh yeah, there's logs right here you can add to the fire pit right here. And if you add to this fire pit, it's not too much different than if you just make your own bonfire. So try to keep that in mind as well. It's not really going to be a huge benefit to you. Okay, so now we want to go to the port. This is probably one of the most useful areas uh, for a low level. And reason being is the fish. The fish here are actually amazing. So, right now I can currently only get and cook up to, I think it's the catfish. And it heals for 1500. Well, you, the other thing that also heals for 1500 is monkfish. Except for this doesn't require big quests to actually do it. Now, I know some people would say, well, it's not really a big quest. But, you know what? For a lower level, it's actually a big deal. But there is also the port portal and the. If you look to the east here, you'll also see that there is the uh, Ark area. You can actually travel to the Ark here. I did want to show you this here too. Uh, the Makare Drup, or however you say his name. He actually is also another quest icon above his head, so you can do stuff with him as well. And least but not last is the Imperial District. This is where the VIP area actually comes in hand. Uh, as you can see, there's actually already starting to be people here. But if you look in, because I can't, I can't enter it yet. Uh, there is Acadia trees in there. There is the fishing spots in here. And then there's also the mining the spots in here. And then there's also, yeah, right here. There is also a bank chest right inside. So if you do, you know, want to get into the VIP section, it's actually kind of useful. So do keep that in mind. This area here is primarily just for the trees, if you can't enter that area normally. But now, one thing you do kind of want to try to work towards if you are a low level in this area and if you're a high level, if you're going for completion, then by all means, go ahead. But a big target should be for people is to actually get all of your reputation 
up to at least 330,000. Because if you get up to at least 330,000, you're going to be pretty good. Because at that point, you get to you receive extra experience in the form of magic carpet dust clouds during any skilling event, even outside of Menaphos. Now, before I forget, there is one more thing that is actually important. When you are in Menaphos, occasionally a soul obelisk will appear. Now, what these soul obelisks do offer is a very small amount of XP, but you get a huge amount of reputation compared to everything else in the city. But this does not come with a risk. With this soul obelisk, you are constantly taking damage. I mean, I'm not saying like, you know, bop, 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 bop. I'm saying like every few so seconds, you take about five to 600 damage. Now, it could be scaled to your hit point level. It might not be. I'm not sure. And I really couldn't tell you otherwise. So, if you are low level, if you only have, like, you know, level 10 constitution, it is possible it could be too dangerous for you. And if that's the case, you know, just be very careful. And if you have food uh, linked to your hot bar, like I do, I have my cat, oh, it's a catfish, yeah. I have my catfish actually linked to my hot bar. And through this, I will actually, you know, just hit that button this way. I don't have to keep exiting out and trying to re-enter in. Um, although if you do exit out of it and it returns you to the living world, you'll actually get a little bit of health back. So there is that as well. But I don't know if that affects any long-term gains. So I hope that covers everything for you guys, because there is there is stuff to be done with Metaphos, other than just the Slayer Dungeon. But it is very important that people do remember, this is meant for mid-level players. Now some of the reputation builds, unlocking like the Fight Club, which unlocks the Soul Altar, which that's more of a high-level runecraft, but it is still primarily meant for low levels. So do try to keep that in mind. Otherwise, you know, enjoy the city. There's a lot to be offered. It's a very beautiful city. So yeah, uh, and also, uh, there might be expansions in on this episode. So if there is everything, you know, ever anything added to it, you do expect an edited copy of this video coming out and being re-released every so often. Uh, so, but for now, this is all there is, so thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, later guys.